God bless you, family. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Sam Lopez. And I'm here for the Morning Devo, and I'm excited that you're here with us, listening and watching on a day-to-day basis, or whenever you could get to it. Amen. I know a lot of people are working during this time. I know a lot of people can't get to the live. I know a lot of people are not even getting the notifications of when I'm going live because of the shadow banning. But those who know and follow, amen, you could share it. You could share this this piece of the day with someone else that will really want to receive the peace of God for their day as well. Amen. Because we have a day to devote our lives and we have a day to speak and to listen to the living, holy, righteous, loving God. Amen. On the morning devos. I try to do these Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm over here on the East Coast, Northeast Pennsylvania. And I'm trying my best to stay consistent. And I thank you that I feel the prayers of the people that keep me consistent and keep me moving, keep me motivated. And ultimately, I thank God for his power. When I'm weak, he makes himself strong. And what areas that I lack, he, there is no lack for God. Amen. So he will supply every single need in my life and every single need in your life because he is the God who sees all of our needs and provides for every single one of those needs. An incredible God that we serve. Amen. Good morning, Brother Ricky. I see you, my friend and my brother. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you um, for coming through. Yes, amen for another day. I agree with you on that. We're going to be talking about something that some people might not really comprehend or understand or, or probably won't even respect. The Spirit prays. The Spirit's prayer. Amen. Did you know this? Did you know? That the Holy Spirit, and I'm talking about Holy Spirit God, right, intercedes. That word intercedes simply means God steps in for us. God literally, through the Holy Spirit, steps in for us, intercedes on our behalf. Even when we don't know what to pray, even when we don't know what to think or how to think, even when we don't know what to do, Holy Spirit God intercedes or steps in for us. Now, for a lot of people, that surprises us. So, does it surprise you that God feels this deeply for you? God feels so deeply for you that he'll step in and pray for us by way of his Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit God. Amen. Spirits pray on the morning Devo. Because, man, this is a season to be in consistent, constant prayer. Amen. The Bible says pray without ceasing for a reason. There's so much to pray for. Amen. Uh, So I'm going to continue praying. I'm going to continue believing. And I hope you do the same because God is that good. Sister Joyce, good morning. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Yes, God bless you in Jesus' name as well. God God bless you and your family as well. Amen. Brother Matthew, God bless you. Good morning. And uh, prayer request for a meeting today at work. I got called in by a manager. Not sure what the meeting's about. A new job and got good feedback so far. Thank you, brother. Amen. We'll pray for... um, Matthew, Brother Matthew, amen, for favor in that meeting in Jesus' name. We'll pray for that. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate. Leave them on the live chat. If you want something privatized, you could always inbox me behind the scenes, behind the scenes on any of the social media platforms that you're watching or listening from. And if you're listening from the podcast, welcome back for another episode of the Blaze Bible Studies Morning Devo Edition. Amen. Thank you so much for supporting. Thank you so much for praying. Thank you so much for listening. And you, there should be a way to connect with me from that podcast platform, whatever platform. You could be on iHeartRadio, Spreaker. You could be on Apple Podcasts. You could be on Apple Music, Amazon. I'm, I'm all over the place. All glory to God. Amen. YouTube as an audio version as well. So wherever you're at, amen, there you are. Let's connect. Let's pray for one another. If you have a question, comment, concern, don't hesitate to put it on here. It's all good over here at the Morning Devo. So let's pray. Then we're going to take a minute to share this out with as many people that come to our mind and hearts. Amen. And as usual, if you follow me, you know that we have a website dedicated for these Morning Devos. And I'm going to populate it with so much stuff in the near future. Lord willing, if he allows me to have that near future, that is going to be amazing. Because ultimately, it's going to turn into all things, all soul winners, um, replays, podcasts, trainings, um, Bible studies, 
Um, you name it, it's going to be on there. And there's so many time slots I have available right now. If you want to also partner with me, amen, with the Soul Winners Inc. And you have a message on your heart. Maybe you want to be a guest on one of my shows. Or maybe you just want to you know, support us financially. Uh, but before all of that, please keep me in prayer for me and my family. And I'll keep on praying for you and your family. But there is a way to connect. You go to live.soulmanswithaz.org. You sign up if you have not done that already. It's a one and done deal. Uh, a little picture of yourself. A name that you want to be addressed as or called. And your best email address so I can stay connected with you outside of the matrix. Outside of um, any me- media, social media or anything on the internet. Amen. So let's take a minute and let's pray. Amen. And we're going to make sure we cover um, Brother Matthew um, at his job in that meeting. Um, today at work. So Father, I thank you for every single person that's willing to connect and listen to what you're saying during this morning Devo. I thank you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord Jesus, because you are holy, you are righteous, you are loving, you are most merciful, and you're full of grace and truth. I thank you, Lord God, for Brother Matthew, that you would give him favor, just like when you were with Joseph, just like when you were with the many men of God in the scriptures, you found favor, just like you found favor with Noah, Lord God, I'm asking that you, Lord God, will find favor in Matthew, Lord God, that he will receive your favor in whatever meeting that's about, amen, today, today, Lord God, he needs the favor of God upon his life, the hand of God upon his life, and we agree that that means it'll go according to your will and purpose, for his life as well. So I speak life concerning all things living. I'll come against any demonic activity, any demonic influence, any demonic distraction in the powerful, mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, for health to our body, strength to our bones, and a new day. I pray, Lord God, for forgiveness for any sin that I have sinned against myself or against you or against anyone, Lord God. Lord, forgive me and clear that or cleanse that out of my life, Lord God, as you would do the same for every single viewer and every single listener so we can move forward victoriously knowing that we hear from you and we learn from you and we move by your spirit. And today, Lord God, as we speak or we discover the Spirit's prayer, Lord God, in the book of Romans. I thank you, Lord God, for your word today. And I thank you for the testimonies of your powerful, working, wondrous power over our lives, Lord God, that people will share and testify of your great faithfulness. I pray this by faith, knowing that you answer your prayers, the prayers that you hear according to your will and according to your purpose over our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Only say amen if you agree. If you don't agree, you don't have to amen. Amen. But I understand that a lot of people don't agree with what's going on here, don't agree with what we're saying, but we'll cover them in prayer because we just learned the other day that we need to love our enemies, pray for our enemies, lend to our enemies. Amen. Because they're not ultimately my enemy for what I believe. They're ultimately an enemy of God. Amen. And because they're an enemy of God, we need to pray for them, for their souls, that God will um, cause them to repent. Amen. And they will turn to the righteousness of God. And that'll be a great thing for your eternal destiny. Amen. Sister Medallia, God bless you. Good morning. God bless you and your family as well. It's good to see you back on the Morning Devo, my sister, my friend. So let's go for it. Let's share this out for 60 seconds. When we come back, we're going to be in Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse number 26. Romans 8, 26. When we come back after this minute, I'll be right back. Man, that's 60 seconds. Amazing how fast it goes. Romans chapter 8, verse number 26. And the Bible says it like this. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, 
We don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. That's a deep emotion when the Bible talks about groanings. Amen. And by the way, um, let me just let you know that Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul speaking to the Christians in Rome. Amen. So this is a Christian message for Christians. Amen. But if you're not a believer and you want to eavesdrop, right, you want to know some secret sauce about what we believe and why we believe, keep on listening, keep on finding out, keep on investigating. I, I really challenge you to investigate the claims of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because once you investigate his claims and come to the reality and to the truth of what he said was real and it is real and it is effective, then you're going to want to be a part of this. Amen. You're going to want to be a part of what Holy Spirit God is doing on the earth through his children. You're going to want to be a part of that. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of something that is ultimately true, ultimately that leads you to heaven and ultimately will give you eternal life in him? Amen. And not only give you life, but life in abundance. So Romans 8.26. Let's reread it in the Amplified Version. So we could get a, a deeper understanding of what the Amplified Version you know, expands on. Romans 8.28 Amplified says, In the same way, the Spirit comes to us. Amen. That's important. The Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. How many people have some weaknesses? Uh, I could raise both hands if I didn't have this tablet or this iPad in my hand. But yes, we have weaknesses in our lives. But there is no weakness in the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God is all-powerful, almighty, all-present, everlasting. Amen. And guides us into all truth. He, Holy Spirit of God, is the one that helps us, the one who comes to us, the one who dwells inside of every single believer. Amen. And because of that, we have victory. Because who He is makes us who we are. And we identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit God reminds us of His Word, reminds us of the Word of God, reminds us of the promises of God, reminds us of our identity in Christ, keeps us self-controlled when we have weaknesses. Amen. And God will fill every single void in our hearts and in our lives. We don't have to look for new things. We don't have to look for other things outside of the scriptures. We don't have to look for other things in this world, amen, to satisfy us. We have the one who satisfies our soul, living on the inside of us. Mind-blowing concept, mind-blowing truth, mind-blowing reality. It's here. He's here, amen? And he wants to be um, known in our weaknesses. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should. But the Spirit Himself, Holy Spirit God Himself, knows our need. And at the right time, I should say at the perfect time, intercedes, or that word intercedes really means steps in on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. And I know people are saying, well, like like tongues. Well, maybe like tongues. Amen. But it's for sure too deep for words. His groanings, Holy Spirit groanings. He cares so deeply about us, amen, that is, he speaks with sighs on our behalf and groanings on our behalf. And the Bible says that that are too deep for words. That's a love that we can't really comprehend, amen, agape love, God's love for us, that he would intercede, step in, protect us, guard us, guide us, love us. Shower us with mercy and grace. Lavish us with gifts. Amen. All of that is from the only true, living, loving, righteous, holy God. No other, no other God could satisfy all those things. Amen. In our lives. There is no other God that could do that. So why is it important to have the Holy Spirit step in for us? Well, I'll tell you right off the bat. If God didn't step in for me. So many ways, so many times, I would, have, I would have still been lost. But he interceded on my behalf. Amen. When I didn't know what to do, and sometimes when you don't know what to do, guess who knows what to do all the time? Holy Spirit God. So it's a great thing that believers all over this earth right now, they might be going through different things, but the Bible says, don't be surprised at the trouble and trial that you're going through. I'm paraphrasing. Because as if it's not happening to another brother or sister in the other part of the world. 
somewhere in this world, someone needs Jesus. Someone needs Holy Spirit to intercede for them on their behalf right now as we seek. So Father God, intercede. Step in for my brothers and sisters, wherever they are, that need your intervention in Jesus' holy name. I know he would do it. And he won't, he'll wait to the perfect time. Sometimes it's nerve wracking for me. I'll be like, okay, God, I needed you like yesterday. And God is probably, well, he knows the exact time that he's going to step in. And he's like, don't worry. That's why the Bible says, don't worry. Amen. Worrying is a sin. It leads to all kinds of sinful ideas. It leads to all kinds of anxiety and all that. Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything because God knows the exact perfect timing that he's going to step in and intervene. There's been so many situations in my life that said, God, I needed you like last week. I needed you like yesterday. I needed you like an hour ago. And God is like, I have the perfect time when I'm going to step in. Amen. So we could trust in the perfect timing of God. We could trust that he is interceding on our behalf, that he's stepping in. And filling any single void in our lives, any lack God will um, provide. And in our weakness, he will be made strong. We're covered, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing we cannot do that God calls us to do. Nothing at all. Amen. You know who's the worst enemy against what God is telling us to do? Amen. We are. I was thinking, thinking sometimes because we're not paying attention. Maybe we're distracted. Maybe we're worrying. Maybe we're anxious about something. Maybe we're angry at God for whatever reason. Maybe we're angry with our brothers and sisters. Maybe we are having a relational problem or issue. Maybe we're dealing with unforgiveness. All of that stuff could distract us and throw off us course. Of course, but when we're listening, when we're praying, when we're hoping in Jesus, I think we're on point. I'm on point every time I read the scripture. Amen. Because now I'm prophesying what God will speak, what God will say. Amen. And I'm lining my soul and my spirit up with what God has said already and what God is doing already. So and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. So why is it important to have the Holy Spirit? God intercedes for us because plain and simple, we don't know what to do every time. But we know a God who always knows what to do. What to do all the time. It's an amazing idea, right? God always knows what to do. God is always right. He's never wrong. God is all powerful. There's never a time when he loses his power. God is all knowledgeable. There's never a time that God is surprised. Nothing surprises God. Amen. So whether you praise God, it's not going to help God. If you curse God, it's not going to hurt God. God is an eternal being. He's God all by himself. Yet he made himself available. Through the shedding of the blood of God the Son. Amen. And because of that, he offers us forgiveness. Go to Jesus. First, you have to repent. Turn from the ways of this world. Turn from it. I'm telling you, it leads to nowhere. It leads to self-destruction, disaster. There's so much mockery right now going on in the music industry against this whole gospel. And I feel so sorry for those people. They are lost. They are deceived. Um... It's incredible. And then they say, you're judging them. They're judging themselves, ladies and gentlemen. Read John chapter 3, the whole chapter for yourself, and see what happens when people are deceived or people reject the gospel message. Who's judging? The Bible says in John chapter 3, read the whole chapter for yourself. Who's judging? Christians? Jesus? Or themselves? Amen? And you'll be shocked at the answer if you don't know the answer already. So why is it important to have the Holy Spirit intercede for us? Does anybody want to answer that who's live with me? If not, my answer is because we don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. We don't know where to go. But God has direction. God knows what to say. God knows what to do. By way of his Holy Spirit, that's why he steps in. He said, let me step in for my child, Sam. He doesn't know what to do right now. He's distracted. He's anxious. Let me step in for my brother's And sisters, let me step in for my children. Let me step in because I know what to do. That's Holy Spirit God. Amen. There's no one like Holy Spirit God. He is ultimately other. He is uber other. He's supreme being. He is the counselor. He is our paraclete. He is our helper. Amen. He is our confidence. He is our strength when we're weak. Holy Spirit God got us covered. He steps in. He steps in. So the word groaning, 
when we read in here groaning, gives the feeling of great emotion. Amen. Who said that God doesn't have emotion? Have you read the Gospels? Jesus expressed emotion at the Garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross. Uh, the Bible says he was crying like droplets or sweating droplets of blood. And he was, he was you know, feeling some already the, the pre-pain that he was going to face on that cross. So he asked the Father, you know, can I pass this cup? Can I, can I do something else? But he said, ultimately, not my will, but your will be done. And he went anyway, full of emotion, full of all these feelings that were welling up in him. And he still went to that dying cross for me and for you. That's why a lot of people can't get it. Listen, I didn't believe it. I could not believe why would an innocent man die for a guilty person like me? That's how I used to think when I was a teenager all the way till I was 30 years old. I said, why would anybody die for a stranger? Why would anybody die for people who deserve to die? Why would anybody offer their lives as a living sacrifice for me? I could never make that connection until God himself revealed himself to me, connected with me, amen, and opened my eyes and opened my ears and started changing my heart and changing my mind, amen. He did it. No preacher could do it, no evangelist could do it, no apostle could do it, no prophet could do it, no teacher could do it, amen. I couldn't be argued into the kingdom of God. Nobody was smart enough to change my mind on me not connecting with God. So God interceded. So it seems like somebody prayed for me. I know I was prayed into the kingdom. I could tell you 100%. I know I was prayed into the kingdom because I wasn't looking to get into the kingdom until I realized that I needed God. A lot of people don't believe in God until they realize he's the only one they have. A lot of people don't believe in miracles until they need one. A lot of people don't believe in the Bible until they read it and apply it and see what happens in their lives. I was that guy. I didn't want no parts. Amen. But it seems like somebody sent angels in my direction. Somebody was praying and because they were praying for my life. Amen. God stepped in on their behalf for my behalf to get saved. So the word groaning gives the feeling of great emotion. Our God has emotions. Amen. He showed it through the the Lord Jesus Christ. He showed it through his prophets. Amen. When the prophets in the Old Testament were reminding God of his promise to not destroy the land. Amen. How many times did Moses say, no, God, you promise don't destroy the people. Don't destroy the Israelites. Amen. And uh, Abraham, when the whole Solomon and Gomorrah thing went down and said, God, if there's if I can find 50 or if I can find 40, if you could find 30 or whatever, that's righteous. Will you spare them? Amen. And God was like, OK, I'll spare them if I find any righteousness in that land. You know, but if you read the whole story, you know, Solomon and Gomorrah was destroyed because none was righteous. They were going crazy over there. Amen. It was like Times Square every day over there. Amen. No pun intended. But the word groaning gives the feeling of great emotion. So we know that God has emotion. And when he's expressing those emotions, it's through sighs and groanings. When we don't know what to pray for, God steps in. When we don't know what to do, God steps in by Holy Spirit. So does that surprise you? Amen. It's when I first learned this, it was surprising to me uh, that the God of heaven and earth fears this deeply about me and wants to do something on my behalf. That's how personal this relationship is with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My relationship with the Lord is personal, but evidently it's not private if I'm in front of you or if you're listening on the podcast. My identity in Christ is personal. But it's not private. I will never privatize my loyalty and me worshiping God. I will never privatize that. Amen. I'm not a secret uh, mission Christian. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm coming out. Amen. People know I'm a believer. They don't believe in what I believe. But they know at least I believe in what I believe. And I know a little something about what I believe. Why? Because I study the word of God daily. This word that we have. Is like no other word. Amen. It's not like if you pick up a book and read it and then somebody makes a second edition, a third edition, a fourth edition. It's not like that. When you read the Holy Scriptures of God, amen, the author of the Bible is always with you every time you read his word. 
Tell me if you have a book in your library somewhere in your house, in your crib or in your apartment. Tell me if there's any book that you can open up that you feel the presence of the author with you right then and there. And I'm not talking about spiritism. I'm not talking about witchcraft. I'm not talking about none of that. I'm talking about when you know that you feel the presence of the living author and finisher and perfect of our faith alive, listening to you, reading to you and with you present right then and there on the spot. There's no other book that could do that except for the Bible. I challenge you to read the scriptures, amen, for yourself. But if you read them uninspired, if you read them not filled with Holy Spirit God, a lot of it will be like blah, 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 blah. You're not going to understand what's going on, amen. And then you're going to call me up or you're going to connect with me and say, man, I read the, the Bible from cover to cover. So many people have told me that. I see you, brother Juan. God bless you, brother. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. And thanks for watching on YouTube. I heard so many people through my life so far tell me, listen, brother, you could believe in that book, but I read it from cover to cover. And it's, you know, there's mistakes in there. It's a lot of myths, a lot of stories, a lot of made up things. They snatch from this ancient culture. They snatch from it. They have all that stuff going on. Right. And the error part, I have yet for someone to show me the errors in the scriptures. And the contradictions, they're common. Um, what you think is a contradiction um, nine out of ten of them, I could easily explain that it's not a contradiction. Because when you're inspired by God to read the Word of God, God will teach you by His Holy Spirit. He will step in on our behalf to teach us what we're reading. Uninspired people who read the Scriptures, they read it like a novel, or they read it like if one author created the whole 66 books, when it's actually um, different authors in the scriptures, amen, all inspired by one Holy Spirit, one God, amen, one faith, one baptism. They are inspired by Holy Spirit to write down what they wrote down, amen. Over 1,500 years of history, I think it's over 30 authors in the scriptures, amen. Over 1,500 years of history, amen, talking about everything, all all kinds of styles of writing, poetry. There's wisdom books in there. Um, there's the like, book of Acts, is like the superhero, um, apostles, amen, all of that. It's all in there. So God, by his Holy Spirit, helps us in our weakness. And he gives us an example. When we don't know what God wants us to pray for, amen, I, that's amazing to me alone. There's so much to pray for, and you're scrambling to know what to pray for? Listen, if you don't know what to pray for or who to pray for, pray for me. Amen. I could use prayer. What about you? There's so much going on in this world. Amen. So much going on in this world that you could find something to pray for. If you have time to worry, you have time to pray. Amen. If you have time to be anxious, you have time to pray. If you have time to gossip, you have time to pray. If you have time to get angry at somebody, you have time to pray. If you have some time to curse somebody out, you definitely have time to pray. There's always a time to pray. There's never a time that we should not um, be praying because there's so many things. We don't have to go and create a way to pray or anything like that. Just pray. Amen. Amen. The author is still alive. The Bible is life. Amen. The Bible, you saw that? The Bible is life. I agree with you 100%. When you could cut open the scriptures, amen, and somebody says if you rip open uh, if you rip the pages off the Bible, it starts bleeding Jesus' blood. Amen. From beginning to end. Genesis, creation, he's there. Revelation, he's there. Amen. And everywhere in between. There's a book that came out recently that I saw on TBN. They're selling it. Um, there's an author of the book that says you can find Jesus in every single one of the books of the scriptures. Amen. And I know it's debatable because they say in, I think, in Esther. And there's another book, uh, Song of Solomon. That God is not mentioned. So people say that. How could Jesus be in those books? And you know. It's debatable. It's a secondary issue. I believe that Jesus is in every single book myself. I haven't studied that all out myself. Amen. But I have no problem believing that he's involved in every single book. Or he's mentioned. Or he's somewhere in there. It's called the Bible Code. I think it is the book. You might want to check that out. If you're interested in that subject. But that's all I have. So the question, did you know that the Holy Spirit steps in for you? He does. I'm telling you, you know it. Amen. There's already a knowing inside of you that tells you, yeah, Holy Spirit stepped in. There's no way that I could have got this far in life without God stepping in. In a lot of situations in my life where there was no other way out and God made a way out. 
that there was no other place to go and God found me a place to go when there was no other thing to say or to, to um, imagine and God gave me imagination he gave me something to say when my weakness God showed up he stepped in interceded for me by way of his Holy Spirit and made himself known strong and powerful amen when them witches were trying to send curses they're still trying to send curses I could sense it in the spirit are you doing yourself dirty you witch, you warlock, you're doing yourself dirty. Stop trying to send curses and hexes this way. And my spiritual kids, they are they are they are blocked by your curses. Amen. You might have some influence over them here and there, but you don't have them. They're already covered by the blood of Jesus. So stop wasting your time. I don't know why I sense that so heavily today. Stop wasting your time. It's not gonna happen. It's gonna make it bad for you. Amen. The one who's in me is greater than the one who is in the world. And what you're doing is you're conjuring or you, you're, you're getting your, your ideas from the one who is in this world who is defeated. So you're on a losing team. I'll be praying for you that you will come out of that darkness and come into the marvelous light of Christ. It's good over here. We can see over here in the kingdom of God. Amen. It's clear. The skies are clear. It's a blue sky. Amen. Uh, we are happy. We are full of joy. We are full of power. We are inspired by God. We are unified. We are the body of Christ. Amen. So come on this side. It's much better. And there, yeah, there is power in prayer. And there is some kind of power. There's a form of power in your prayers. But there's no other greater power than the prayer of God's word. Can you imagine? If there was ever something like uh, uh, that went down that we could, um, you know, they're doing these verses like rappers against rappers and and put put us in a steel cage uh, with the uh, and let's pray. I'll pray to my God and you pray to your God or your idol or your statue or your demon and see who's going to win. Um, it's obvious. It's, it's a fixed fight at that point. You know that uh, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And that means that the prayers of the unrighteous are us little. Amen. Let's let's see who will win. It's a fixed fight, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want that type of smoke. Amen. And so I'm warning. I'm warning every single witch, warlock, um, Satanist. I'm warning you, stay out of my business. And stay out of my brothers and sisters' business. And stay off of my spiritual children. In Jesus' name. So I, I was going to cast some things out, but it's not necessary. Amen. Uh, I want to really pray for my enemies and call them out of that darkness. Just like I was called out of the darkness. I was into a little witchcraft here and there, a little santeria here and there. I knew a couple of things. I saw a couple of things. And I know it has some form of power, some form of influence. Um, but it wasn't it. It wasn't it. Amen. Then when I got on this side, amen, and God changed me, transformed me, saved my heart and saved my life, changed my heart, changed my mind, changed my identity, amen. Now when I pray, I feel some real power, amen. And I know things are going to happen because God is governing his prayer. When you attach your prayer with the promises of God, it's over, amen, in a good way. So I'm out of here, amen. Let's keep on praying in the spirit. Let's rely on the spirit of God to intercede on us. Amen. Holy Spirit of God will intercede. Read Romans chapter 8, the whole chapter. It'll be a good time for a Bible study for that. Romans chapter 8, the whole chapter. But we were hanging out in verse number 26 of Romans chapter 8. So God feels for us deeply and he steps in on our behalf. Now, the last question I will ask when I leave you is why would he do that? Amen. I'll leave you with that. Why would God do that? Why does he care so much for us amen it's a good question to ponder for the rest of the day so god bless you all god keep you all and remember always that god is good peace